So let's take stock of this for a moment. What have I got here? Um, this is promising. This is um, this is progress, right? You can see here that what I've got is OA plus AD, which um, is that original OD vector that I mentioned. And then you've got this one hanging out on the end. So if you think about this, OA plus AD rather, um, it takes me to um, D, as I mentioned before. And what I should get at the end, if this whole result is correct, I should end up at C, right? So I should be able to go from here up to here. This is the remaining vector, as it were, from D up to C, except I don't have DC there. I've got I times AD, which is, there's AD and what does I do, right? So this is where you need to think back to your complex number arithmetic. And this, by the way, overlaps with a bit of the exam review we're gonna do later on, so sorry, spoilers. Um, this is something which you had to do in your um, task. If you remember thinking about the parallelogram question, uh, you were given three vertices of a parallelogram, you had to find the fourth one. Um, the mistake that a lot of students made is what I'm about to highlight here. So how am I going to try and reason through getting from this to something like DC? Here's my reasoning, okay? Uh, and I invite you to write this along with me. Since I know that ABCD is a square, that tells me there's all kinds of relationships between the sides. Uh, in terms of AD and CD, I know two things. Number one, that AD and CD are equal in magnitude. And I also know they're perpendicular because all um, you know, adjacent sides in a square are at 90 degrees or at right angles, right? So since that is true, I can therefore say that to get from, you know, if I take vector uh, AD and multiply it by I, I'm going to be rotating it Think about this for a second. Uh, we're rotating it by 90 degrees, but make sure you know which direction you're going to be rotating it in, right? Here is vector AD. So if you rotate it um, by 90 degrees anti-clockwise, right? So let me just draw that in for you. Anti-clockwise. Then you're going to get a vector like, say in this case, it's, it's vector AB. Um, but vector AB, starting from A, going to B, is the same as starting from D and going to C. Same direction, same magnitude. So these two vectors are equal to each other. And one of the common errors that was made when you were doing this parallelogram question in the, in the AT4 um, was that uh, you would say here mistakenly, because you've got these relationships here between the sides, where it doesn't matter, like CD and DC, we think of synonymously, but in vectors, they are not. They are opposite to each other, right? So that's why it's really important that you uh, make note of the direction because that confused several students. So therefore, um, if I call this one up here, I'm gonna substitute this um, into one and hopefully you're following along um, and can see this pretty much gets us home, right? Um, I can say that this is going to be equal to OA plus AD plus DC. So you should just follow the tail to head, tail to head of the vectors. You're starting at O, you're getting to A, you're getting further on to D, and then you're ending up at C. So this is, by definition, OC, which is C as a complex number as required. So um, I'll conclude like such. All right, so like I said, this is not the fastest solution. I'm about to show you a much faster one and then we're gonna move into reviewing the task. But I hope it was in a way that made sense for you, right? That you can actually follow along why I did every step that was kind of, even if you don't know what to do, you know how many solution methods, like the one I'm about to show you, they require like this magical insight. And you're like, oh, it just came to me what I had an epiphany and then I knew what to do, right? This is kind of the way to slog your way through. When you have no idea what to do with this result, well, write it in vectors and then see where it goes. Like expand, um, think about how to connect this vector to this vector um, by expanding and you can, it sort of falls out. Even though it's not efficient, um, it works and it's not difficult to use the knowledge there, okay? Okay. As promised, um, and uh, I'd, I'd love to know, by the way, if any of you use the method that I just used or use the method that I'm about to show you, um, or a different way again, right? I'd especially like it, actually, if you had a completely different solution, um, because I'll, I always love finding new solutions, basically. Uh, let me show you another way that's much more efficient, but blink and you'll miss it. That's how quick it is. Um, and I remember, you know, when I read this solution, I thought I would never have thought of doing this um, because I'm just not that clever. Maybe some of you have, um, but you'll see why I'm showing it to you second because it, it's a bit of a rabbit out of a hat solution in my view anyway. Okay, what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to call you back to this line of working that I had from the previous solution, right? It's this reasoning that connects AD and CD together, namely 
equal in length, magnitude, um, perpendicular, so therefore I can get from one to the other by rotating 90 degrees in the appropriate direction. So once you know this, right, you can actually connect this straight to, let me just go back to the question, right? Here's the result we're trying to prove. This one right here, right? Uh, if you look at it carefully, you should recognize that C and D and A, the complex numbers, are closely connected to O, C, O, D, O, A. That's how I made this direct sort of substitution here, right? And if you have a look at this line of reasoning, you might recognize that C and D and A all appear immediately, like I don't even need the origin really as a reference point, it's just kind of there to help you, right? So if I think about this line, and um, for reasons that will become clear in a second, I'm going to write it in reverse order. Um, so here's the left hand side that I'm going to choose, and here's the right hand side. How can I turn this, uh, you know, what we did in the first instance was we converted complex numbers into vectors. Um, C is the complex number is equivalent to the vector OC, right? So I went from complex numbers to vectors. I'm about to do the reverse. Takes a bit more thinking, but it's gonna pay off at least I hope, right? DC, how do you get from D to C, which is this vector, right? From D all the way up to C, right? I hope that you can see one of the ways you can do it is to kind of um, reverse engineer this, right? So what I can do is I can go from uh, D back to the origin, right? Now, because I'm going back to the origin, this is not um, this is not D lowercase the, the complex number. This is actually going to be minus D, right? I'm going going the opposite direction, right? And then I need to go from there up to C, right? So that's going to be little C, the complex number. So vector DC is equivalent in complex numbers terms to you do D backwards and then you add C. Does that make sense? Right? Can you see how I've reasoned that? And you can use exactly the same logic to try and translate, as it were, AD into, from vector notation into complex numbers. So let's have a quick look here. Um, I was talking about AD, right? So how do I get from A, which is here, all the way up to D? And the answer is start from the origin, right? Uh, sorry, start from A rather and go back towards the origin, so that's minus A, and then move from the origin, just I'm pulling the same trick that I did before, and go up to capital D, so that's the complex number D. So you can see here, this is gonna be equal to, and hopefully you can see the parallel with the other um, vector that I've written there, it's gonna be minus A plus D, right? Now from here, there's almost no more thinking. This is the beauty of complex numbers, right? Arithmetic with complex numbers equals geometry. Um, do you remember back when we first discovered like multiplying complex numbers together it does like scaling and rotation? You're like, whoa, I just did some multiplication and expanding and collecting like terms and I got a whole new number that just did geometry in the background. This line is about to do all our geometry for us. Remember what the result is that we're trying to prove? We're trying to make C the subject. So I'm just gonna add that to both sides. And then, uh, I sorry, I'm gonna add D to both sides so that I just have C by itself. And then I'm also going to expand this uh, left, right hand side rather. So I'm gonna get minus IA plus ID plus D because that's the, uh, that's where I got that from over there, okay? And you're like, oh, this is it, like look at the result you were trying to prove. You just have to factor out the, the complex number D, so that leaves you with a one plus I, does that look familiar? With the D and then the minus IA. I told you you would blink uh, and miss it if you didn't look closely. Going from vectors to complex numbers turns out to be like it makes the arithmetic, that's the whole point of complex arithmetic, it makes geometry just come along for the ride.